constituency councils in Barbados are here to stay. The assurance is coming tonight from Prime Minister Frundell Stewart. It's come two days after the end of the estimates debate in Parliament, in which the councils were again hammered by members of the opposition as an unnecessary expense. Well, the Prime Minister was speaking this afternoon at the St. Michael's South Constituency Council's biannual town hall meeting. It took place at the Graydon Seeley Secondary School. Constituency councils are here to stay. Those who want to continue to abuse them are free to do so. But the abuse is not going to weaken the government's resolve in relation to constituency empowerment. This is not DLP constituency empowerment. This is constituency empowerment across Barbados. And Mr. Stewart says he stands by the decision to create the councils and he's lauded his own council for its sterling work in empowering the community through projects and programs. I have no regrets at all about the creation of these constituency councils. I have no regrets at all about the impact which their existence has been making on the claims of the aged, the claims of our young people. Well, Prime Minister Stewart has also addressed the issue of funding for the councils, acknowledging that the challenging economic times have impacted on the level of financial resources which are available. He's also revealed that the annual David Thompson football tournament has drawn much of the funding which is usually available to the councils. We look forward to being able to better resource these councils so that they can expand on the work they have been doing and um, that they can continue to make on Barbados the kind of impact they are obviously making in very difficult times. Meanwhile, over 150 residents of St. Michael's South are said to be employed as a new construction company gets going. Seven Construction Company, the brainchild of DLP candidate for the area, Patrick Tannis, will allow several of the artisans in the Pine community to hone their skill while earning an income. Though not officially launched yet, Mr. Tannis says the company has so far been well received. The artisans have actually been... Um, uh more than overwhelmingly pleased that such an idea has, has actually emerged through their colleague and friend and person that they grew up with, Patrick Tannis. You know, I'm a, a minister and already a minister in the church and the, the fact that, you know, they can see that this stuff is real. This is where the rubber hits the road. And there, you know, there are people who talk a lot, but over the years we have been doing things, tangible things. And one of the projects undertaken by the new company was the replacement of this guttering on block number two in Meadow Road last week. Residents there say they're grateful. We thought the housing, housing say well, they don't put, they don't put a gathering anymore. So I get four of us from here, out here, right? And we get a gathering, we bought our own gathering, right? So then we contact housing, they said they would do it, but then they, some problems come and they, they didn't worry, so we... I used Mr. Tannis at the same time I talked to him and he said, leave it to him and he'll get it fixed. The gutman was looking real bad and my window when the rain fall, it come right down by the window. I said the good thing that I changed the, the low verse. Mm -hmm. Not every time we get a downpour, we're going to move the bed. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cause it just come right, instead of coming in the gutter, it like it come in the gutter and go over. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Come right down by the window. Well, there's a suggestion tonight that government should consider taking advantage of the Venezuela-based petro carib oil deal. Pan-Africanist David Comijan believes that the deal could be the key to help propel the stalled local economy. Speaking during last evening's University and Independence Square event, he suggested that all regional countries which have signed on to the deal are forecast to record positive growth in their economies this year. So far, Barbados, Montserrat and Trinidad and Tobago are the only territories which have not signed the agreement. Mr. Comichong says there are several benefits, including obtaining cheaper oil that can be gained from being a signatory to the agreement. petro Caribe is not only about how you can buy petroleum cheaper. petro Caribe is also about capital funds to fund 
agricultural development, capital funds to fund social welfare development projects. Well, a suggestion to local union leaders that they demand full disclosure whenever they're negotiating on behalf of their workers. The appeal is coming from Father John Rogers, rector of the St. Luke's Anglican Church. At the time, he was delivering a sermon during a service to mark the launch of Public Workers Week held by the National Union of Public Workers. I challenge us all today. I challenge us in our individual pursuits as Christians. I challenge us in our institutional pursuits as trade unions and organizations within this country to recognize that if we are going to rise to that level that Christ is calling us to, there must be full disclosure. We must bear ourselves. We must look deep within and ask ourselves, who am I and what do I really represent? In the meantime, the NUPW General Secretary Dennis Clark says the unions do embrace full disclosure. We have taken on board what you have said because there has been a motto of not just NUPW but the Barbados Workers Union. And I believe you have heard Comrade Trotman over the years, uh, especially within recent time, sh shouting and crying for full disclosure. It is important that we have it because um, it is the only way we can satisfy our members that what we are doing is correct and is the only way that management can have a true understanding of the direction that the union is coming from. Well, lawmen are at this hour questioning four Barbadian men detained in connection with the latest drug bust off Harrison's Point in St. Lucie. Yesterday at about half past six in the evening, a joint operation led by members of the police drug squad and supported by the Barbados Coast Guard and the regional security system intercepted a 24-foot pirogue boat at about 10 nautical miles off the northern coast of Barbados. This led to the seizure of just under 600 pounds of cannabis in 14 polythene bags, three taped packages and a backpack. The boat was also seized. The four men are continuing to assist police with their investigations, but charges are yet to be laid. Further afield now, a new data from a French satellite shows potential debris from Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 in the southern Indian Ocean. Radar echoes had picked up several objects at about 2,300 kilometers from Perth in Australia. This is the third possible sighting in the area of Western Australia that has become the focus of the search effort. Flight MH370 disappeared on the 8th of March en route from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia to Beijing in China with 239 people aboard. <laughs> 